Welcome to Weld.com. <clears throat> I've had several questions about how, I, how to saddle pipe, like if you're doing fence work or something, there's a couple things about this. Um, you know, a lot of people are using two inch pipe, two and a half inch pipe for doing their uprights and a top rail. Uh, I have always, you know, believe it or not, I've always cut pipe without even putting a mark on it in these smaller tubes when I'm saddling them. But there's a couple of key things. Some of them are kind of funny. Uh, somebody gave me this. It's a total cut product and uh, quite simply just spring loaded, slap it over the pipe, bring it down and uh, we can put some marks on here. Sharpen soapstone, we can follow the contour. Pretty convenient, quick, simple. If we were working out in the field and we have all of our uprights already cemented in the ground. We can snap an elevation line and go on with this and center it up. It does have the hinge side and it has the uh, cut over here where it opens up. Now, I'm trying to get this off here where I don't mess up my marks. I'm going to do this two ways. The first thing is I'm going to set this up. You know, I could go around this. Matter of fact, I think I will. I think I'll start out up here and I'll try to, I'll try to trace this contour and then I'll go back and do it the way that I've always done it. Let me get my gear on here real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and use a face shield with a dark lens today. A lot of times when I'm making a couple of cuts on clean steel, I do not worry about uh, dark vision. Sometimes I'll wear my uh, sunglasses but a lot of times if I'm making just a couple of cuts, it does not bother me and I'm not really looking at the flame deep, hard and concentrating, doesn't bother my eyes. I have a double lot tip. We're cutting on schedule 40, two inch pipe. I have a double lot tip and I have my pressure set at five and 20. I don't want any more than that because I want to get a good burn on this. Again, this is clean steel. I might take the time right now to mention if you're cutting on rusty steel, which I have, and it is, uh, it's horrible, especially when you get a layer of rust on the inside. First thing I do is go try to beat that rust loose on the inside. Uh, I've cut stuff that had paraffin and kind of a sleeve on the inside. And at that point, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not even using the oxygen jet. I may turn a, a, a type of a flame where I'm just kind of melting around there because it's, it's just horrible. You, it just reacts with everything and you don't get a good clean cut. This is good steel, good pipe, so we should get a, a fairly good cut out of it. So I can get a good flame on here get that oxygen jet rolling through there. I'm going to start slightly away from where I'm seeing to Start out here on the edge, move up into my contour. I tend to move away from my cut, come back into it. Now, because this is fairly thin, my part did not fall off of there. I expected that, but it should be loose. I should be able to get this off of here. Okay. And we have a pretty good saddle that fit that contour, or I went around the contour. I do have a couple of areas to clean up. If I was out in the field, I would take a hammer and probably knock this 
heavy slag loose and then I'd grab the, the roll cone, cone stone that I like to call them, and I'd run this around here and take care of the other slag if I needed to reshape this slightly, like where I re-entered the cut. I left a little knob right there. Clean this up real quick. Now, here's what I run into a couple of times, and this is the funny part. I get a big old long piece of pipe and I'm cutting it for a mid rail or whatever, and I'll come over here and I'll cut this saddle on one end, and I'll go to the other end of the pipe on the jack stands or something, and I may have been cleaning it up, but I'll cut the other end of the saddle and it's nowhere close to being centered up. So I get this twisted saddle thing and you get a bunch of gap. It's, you know, that's a mistake. I laugh about it because I did it, you know. Um, now here's the other method. Let's say that this is a great big long piece of pipe and, you know, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 feet, whatever, and I am cutting this double saddle on there. Dimensionally, I need to figure out the total length of pipe because if, if I have two uprights and I just measure in between them and I cut the piece of pipe with the saddle, I'm short. How much are you short? Well, generally when you're cutting a saddle, it is about one third of the nominal pipe diameter. So on a two inch piece of pipe, this two and three eighths outside diameter, I don't want to calculate into that. I just use the two inch part of it. It's generally about a third. So two inch times 0.33 is 0.666, so in and around 5 eighths, 11 sixteenths. You add that to both ends of the piece of pipe and then cut your saddle and you'll be correct for dimension. So let's say that this was a big long piece of pipe and I'm gonna turn it and cut the other saddle, okay? What I need to do so that I avoid doing my big boo-boo that I've done a couple of times in the past, I need to straighten this saddle up. But on this end, I'm not even gonna put a mark. I used to be good enough that I could go all the way up to about four inch, uh, three and four inch pipe without putting a saddle mark on it. Three inch, the cutback is a, right around an inch. And four inch, I believe, is right around an inch and five sixteenths thereabouts. So my method of what I've done in the past doing field work and fence building is to just stand over the top of it. <clears throat> I've, I've pretty much got this saddle plumbed and I just visualize and come back about five eighths of an inch and move to the outside, okay? Let me demonstrate that real quick. Let me cool this off. We'll come back and talk about it. Okay, here's the, here's the end. I haven't cleaned anything up yet. And yes, we have some slag on there and it looks kind of bad, but we'll get it dressed up here in a second and I can clean that up fairly quick. And then here's the end that I did freehand without putting a mark on. So real quickly, without even cleaning it up, Here's the end that we put marks on. And because of the slag, we've got a little gap. Again, it'll clean up nicely. Here's the end that we didn't do any marks on. And 
we're getting that kind of a fit. And then main thing is, you know, are we pretty straight perpendicular? I can easily dress up anything with the cone stone and I'll go do that off camera and I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, I spent a couple of minutes off, or off camera, literally a couple of minutes. I clean these up way more than I would in the field. You know, if we were gonna TIG weld these, this would be nice because I took them over to the belt sander and cleaned the, the rust and mill scale off the outside. Um, this is the one that we put marks on. It has a nice contour, more of a deep throat and rounded. And I'm gonna set this up on a piece of two inch pipe. And gee whiz, uh, we fit pretty nice really. So cool tool, you know, if you, if, I'm not advertising for them. I just think it's a cool product, uh, quick, simple. Put the handy square up here and I'm about a degree off or so. And that could have started out with a not so square cut on the end. Uh, easily weld that gap, easily weld that gap. Generally when you're out in the field, you're running 6010, 6011 or something to quickly lace these up. And then here's the cut that I made without any marks, just pulling it back about five eighths and shooting it off to the corner off to the edge of the pipe and basically the same thing we've got a pretty nice cut around here uh, about the same thing about a degree off you know if i was fitting this up you know like in here i would tack over here so that i could use that as a pivot on my tack i'd bring this up and square it up Weld the rest, be done with it, you know, quick and simple. Anyway, there's an example of a quick saddle on two inch pipe. Uh, these pieces here are some that we have cut in the weld shop for building our fixtures. Like these rascals right here, we'll go with a two inch pipe up off the table into a two and a half inch, and we'll do a set screw type up here so that can, we can manipulate, but these, I can assure you this still has slag on the inside, so this hasn't been cleaned up very much at all. That was definitely done by hand. Uh, we didn't do a lot of grinder work on this. And there's the fit we're getting. So just out of curiosity, I mean, I'm sure this one was visualized as well. Uh, that's really straight. That's pretty square. So again, smaller diameters are pretty easy. Um, you know, a third of the nominal pipe difference or diameter, and that's the saddle depth. So I find this to be kind of entertaining and uh, beneficial when you're building stuff because we want speed, quality. We want our fit to be nice and straight and square, and you want nice looking small welds around here. There's nothing worse than trying to weld on rusty gobbledygook pipe and have a big gap in it. It just doesn't make for quality. So in any event, I hope this helps. If you have questions, anything I can help you with, please let us know. Thanks for watching weld.com. Bob Moffat with Cali College.